Hello and welcome to the Crimson Stitchery, a video channel about making all things that are beautiful and useful. My name is Anushka and this video is about how to knit fast. Show notes and relevant links for this video can be found in the down bar below here on YouTube. This video is about how to knit fast. I'm going to be sharing my top five tips about how to knit a little bit faster um, and I thought that this is particularly relevant now if you're watching it when the video is just being released which is in December as we're coming into the holiday season, the festive period. Um, I'm not sure if you're doing any gift knitting, are you? Let me know in the comments. Personally I've decided to refrain from gift knitting this year year for um, Christmas but in previous years that is something that I've done. Um, it's also something that I've done very spontaneously in mid-December with only two weeks ago I've suddenly decided to start knitting everybody in my immediate family gifts so <laughs> if you're anything like me um, there's those moments kind of arise where you're like oh no how do I just get this to be faster um, so that I can get this done and you know if you set yourself crazy deadlines so here are my top five tips for you. We're going to be counting down in this video from five to one, so my number one tip is going to be at the end, so do keep watching along to find out what they are. Okay, let's get started. Tip number five is get organised. Find a way to set up your knitting bag in a way that means that when you reach for your knitting projects, you've got everything there immediately to hand and you don't need to rummage around. So this is going to be different for each individual person and obviously your knitting bag that you have is also going to look different for you, your style and you know what you're making as well. As a general rule, what I myself like to do is have a larger kind of tote bag. Um, this is a free one that I've got that says make on it. Um, so I like to have that to kind of keep everything for the project in. So all the yarn, the pattern, all the kind of inevitable little accessories and things like that that come up. And then inside the tote bag I'll have um, at least one smaller pouch that might carry the actual bit of knitting that I'm using, you know, leaving all of the kind of excess yarn. So that's kind of easy to go. And then inside that I might also have another smaller purse or pouch that could keep little tiny little tools safe. Um, so that's kind of my general ideal scenario for a larger project. And I'll just take you quickly through a smaller project bag setup, which I've got here. Um, this is a little drawstring bag with a pocket that I made myself. And basically the advantage of, you know, getting organised means you've got everything to hand and you don't need to waste any time running around looking for things, which believe me happens to me, you know, whether that's a spare skein of yarn or a contrast skein of yarn, your pair of good scissors, your yarn needle, your tape measure, you know, it's all just there so that you can just get on with knitting your project and finishing it off much quicker with no wasted time. So I'll just show you what I've got here. So this is a sock project bag and I've knit one sock already. So the sock that I've made is kept in the front pouch, um, ready to get its ends woven in. And that is kept with the project, you know, firstly so that I know where it is uh, and secondly so that I can refer back to it um, whilst I'm knitting the second sock. So that's that there. I then got the skein of yarn that I'm using ready to go. I've got my knitting needles ready to go. Um, I've got the contrast yarn that I'm using for the heel toe and calf, all there too, so it's all together. Then at the bottom of my bag I've got a yarn needle here and a little pair of snips as well as a tape measure. So pretty much every knitting bag that I have has these three tools in them, a yarn needle, a pair of snips and a tape measure. This is a vintage um, retractable tape measure which is a very um, handy thing to have. So it's small and you know it doesn't become unraveled and get tangled up like my other kind of long soft tape measures do. So I always keep those in. Um, also what I might keep is a bunch of stitch markers inside. So on something like this tape measure that had a key ring, uh, ring on it I could clip the um, stitch markers onto that. But in this case I've actually just got a safety pin which I have pinned into the project bag itself. I'll at least have one. Sometimes I have more on the drawstring cords of the project bag 
just depends. I've obviously used them all up. And safety pins are just really, again, a useful tool to have. You can use it as a stitch marker. You can use it um, as a kind of progress marker to, you know, if you have to count like 10 rows, you could put it on row one so that you know, you know, how much you have to count. You don't have to keep getting your tape measure out. If you know that you have to knit a long piece, like uh, 10 inches or more, but you've measured and it's only eight inches, you could put your safety pin in to mark where you've measured up to. Then the next time you knit, you only have to measure up to two inches, which is quicker because you don't have to lay the whole piece out. You don't have to pull the tape measure out in its entirety. So just little things like that, that are little time saving um, quips <laughs> that will just kind of accumulate slowly. So get organized, have everything to hand, have all of your tools easy to reach and it will just streamline the process. Tip number four is to pick thicker yarns. Just start off by setting yourself up for success, especially if you've got a short deadline, and pick projects which use thicker yarns, larger needles. It will just make it quicker because the gauge um, is, is bigger, because the gauge number is, is smaller, so the gauge is heavier. There'll be less physical stitches in whatever it is that you're making, and it will just be quicker. So this is especially effective, I think, when you're making gift knits that you want to be a little bit impressive. So you want to include a texture, a colour work, a cable, a lace, but you just need to speed it up. So just do yourself a favour and go for, I would say, Aran worsted weight yarns and heavier. Um, I've recently been reminded of this fact whilst knitting um, my, cap, my scrap jumper. Uh, which is based on a pattern called Caterpillar by Kay Fessat, really old pattern. And this uses six millimeter needles, which is not something that I'm personally used to. I tend to make most of my sweaters in four ply fingering weight or DK yarns. So going for six millimeter needles, um, it's quite different from my usual sort of 3.75 millimeter average for sweaters. And it's just growing before me. So it's making something that could be quite slow because it's plain stocking stitch and you know could be a bit laborious because it's a scrap jumper and I'm carrying around this large bag of balls of various different yarns with me it's, it's just making it much quicker and means that I don't have to dwell on it as long so um, I will add a note here and say one of the reasons that I tend to go for um, lighter weight yarns, four ply fingering weight, is because they're actually a lot more affordable to knit with and it's much more accessible um, in terms of the price point because the thicker yarn is, the, the more heavier it is, the more expensive it becomes um, for various different reasons. When I've wanted to knit with heavier yarns, I've, I've had to be quite creative and a lot of the time I've actually held fingering weight yarns double um, and this is what I did for my Hulst Super soft jumper which I go into great detail in, in my video series about that. So do consider differing ways to make heavier weight items work for your knitting. Tip number three that I have is to spread your project types spread them out. I feel like this is especially pertinent if you are working on large items or complicated items. Um, Although I will also add that obviously, like everything else, this is this does depend on your personal preference. But I personally find that when I've got a large item like this jumper, it, I mean it's big because I have it's a scrap jumper, so I have to carry around like five different skeins of yarn at all times. Um, or it could be a very large shawl or a more complicated garment, or something like this one, which was knit, you know, all in all in one piece without seaming. It just got very, very big. And when it got to the later stages, I could work on these kind of garments at home or when I was being very, very static, but not when I was out and about. Um, also, when I've got challenging projects such as involving lace and different types of stitch patterns, there are times where I just can't, I can't deal with the um, demands, the mental demands of having to knit a pattern and I'll, I won't be able to touch it for sometimes for weeks just to have a break from it. Um, so the way to kind of keep going on my knitting has been to vary my projects and spread the project type. So what I mean by that is essentially, I tend to have a stocking stitch sock, a plain vanilla sock on the go at all times, pretty much. Um, this has also been a great tactic for knitting fast because I'll just I'll just grab it because you're just knitting round and round and round in a circle and you don't really have to think about it. Um, particularly if you use self-striping or variegated yarns, such as this sock is knit with, it's very motivational because you're just knitting around in a circle, but the fact that the stripe 
stripes are changing and the colours are changing is is very motivating. Um, it, it keeps your interest going. I think it keeps your speed up because you're trying to see what, what comes next. You know, you want to finish the pattern repeat. You kind of don't get bored by it, which um, I think if you stay interested and motivated in what you're doing in front of you, I feel like you're less likely to kind of slow down and I feel like it's probably um, easier to get into that kind of flow state where you're just making things without having to really think about it, I um, mean, in terms of doing the action. So spread your project types. Um, another reason that making vanilla socks has been very good for me is that a few years ago I um, decided to do an experiment where when I picked up my phone to kind of scroll on social media, I tried to force myself to put it down and pick up the vanilla sock instead and just knit a few rows on that. Um, so having a really simple project that I didn't really have to think about was really beneficial as I could just sneak that moment of knitting in in kind of otherwise sort of dead um, or just uncharacteristic periods of time. So scrolling through your phone in the evening or even the morning, um, waiting for a train for five minutes even, um, if not 10 or 15 minutes, um, waiting in a queue, sitting in the doctor's office. If you've got something really simple um, that you don't have to invest too much mental energy in, I think it really helps as a way to speed up your knitting output and your progress. Um, and then when you've got a bit more energy, you can kind of rest by knitting something dull and then you can go back to your larger or more demanding or more complicated project, whatever it is, when you've got the time for it and you're in a better mental place. And then hopefully you won't be bored or, un, you know, kind of under slash overstimulated by your challenging project um, and you won't get put off the knitting. So if you can kind of rest your knitting mind whilst knitting something simple, hopefully you can be fresh and um, just ready and rearing to go on your more challenging project when it's time to work on that. So spread out your knitting types, um, give yourself kind of rest time while still knitting and your output should hopefully um, continue growing whilst you know avoiding the risk of kind of knitting burnout by doing something too difficult that's off-putting. Now we're moving into the last two tips that are the most personal tips to me and have been the most helpful. So let's go straight to tip number two which is adapt your yarn hold. This is something that I myself did quite early on into my knitting process and it might not be something that um, is successful overnight because it takes a little bit of perseverance but it basically means adapting your knitting technique itself um, in order to be faster. So adapt your yarn hold or think about it. So personally I knit English style holding the yarn in my right hand and throwing the yarn and a lot of people have said that knitting continental style which involves holding the yarn in your left hand and using the right hand to pick the yarn. Um, and a lot of people say that continental style is a lot faster. And I myself have tried knitting continental style. Um, I will say that when you experiment in changing your knitting technique, whether that's from throwing to picking, so British to continental, um, or, you know, what, whatever else it is, whatever else it is that you different that you do differently to change your technique. Um, be prepared for a settling in period. Your tension will be different. You are reteaching your hands to knit in a different way. So your first few rows or swatches probably won't look that pretty. But one way to actually max out on your kind of experimenting with your knitting techniques is actually to do that on a plain vanilla sock or uh, like a dishcloth or a washcloth, you know, something that's very simple and not too demanding where kind of tension wobbles won't be the end of the world. Um, then, you know, your practicing will actually end up being on something that you can keep and, and use. So it kind of contributes to your knitting output still. Um, so yeah, think about changing techniques. Personally, I did find that um, picking the yarn, so continental style knitting for me, it was marginally quicker whilst knitting, but I found that the purling was much slower and a bit more convoluted. Um, I will say that I was taught how to knit and purl continental style by someone that is Finnish. So I don't know if there are other continental knitting techniques, you know, in France or Germany or, or wherever else that are slightly different from the Finnish type of knitting and purling, uh, I'm not sure, but I found that the continental purling, at least the way I was taught by a Finnish um, family, was really slow, really slowed me down, whereas when I do the um, British purl, it's pretty much the same as knitting, there's not really very much difference. Linked with the continental knitting and the kind of difficulty of continental purling is the fact that a lot of um, 
garments these days and they're in the round which requires you to mostly do the knit stitch and only purl very very infrequently um, and I guess the advantage of this is that it removes the need to seam the garments at the end as well as mostly utilizing the faster knit stitch. Personally I do this sometimes but I don't actually like to do it that much. Um, I'm a little bit old-fashioned, I still knit garments in pieces and yes uh, seaming the garment is an extra step that takes time but for me it has the advantage of knitting much smaller pieces of work that are far more portable. I can carry them around in the way that I personally struggle to when I've got a big sweater knit in the round kind of sitting in my lap when I'm constantly moving moving it around. For me, those are the things that slow me down, as well as the fact that I'm carting around a larger project bag. It's physically weighing me down, tiring me out as I kind of go out and about in my life on public transport and on foot and on bicycle. Um, so for me, I knit things in the round sometimes. Is it quicker? Um, it feels a lot quicker when you're at the end and you can just put it on um, instead of having to seam it up. But for me, there are, there are lots of advantages still of knitting in pieces. Um, and that's kind of where this purling thing also comes back into consideration. So early on I wasn't very happy with the fact that while, whilst I was knitting as a complete beginner um, it just felt so slow and laborious. Um, what I ended up doing was teaching myself how to hold my yarn properly and, and like I've already mentioned this had a little bit of a learning curve but once I got the hang of it, it became second nature very, very quickly. So essentially when I knit, I don't drop my yarn. Now I have seen um, videos of people like professional knitwear designers um, who knit English style, British style, who do drop the yarn and they manage to do it very, very quickly. Um, but it kind of involves using the whole arm a lot more, which is a bit tiring. Um, whereas when I'm kind of flicking the yarn over the needles, it's happening with much smaller movements in my fingers. Also, I will say that when I knit, um, I engage the whole of my hand, all of my fingers. They're always working together to kind of get the knitting going, to push the stitches off the left hand needle and to get the stitches, you know, down on the right hand needle, that kind of constant adjustment, um, which makes a really big difference. And if you've just got the yarn held in your you know, around your fingers and it's kind of a bit more static, you don't keep having to let go of it and pick it up again, um, it kind of frees up the rest of your fingers to cooperate with each other a lot more and um, yeah, just kind of get on with the knitting and, and allow the kind of stitches to flow and fly off the needles. So we're now down to my number one tip for how to speed up your knitting process, how to knit faster. And this is something that I only adopted a couple of years ago, fairly recently, and actually when I started discovering and watching knitting podcasts. So this is quite new to me. And as well as the last tip, adapting my yarn hold, to be honest with you, this has been the biggest game changer for me in terms of knitting faster, kind of just getting those stitches flowing and finishing projects up and just, you know, being done with it. And I would say that this is a thing that affects my knitting speed the most, um, honestly, more than kind of small changes in technique, like, you know, seaming or knitting in the round and more than kind of more general principles about, you know, being organized and all of the rest of it although honestly they do have a big contributing factor. Tip number one is choose slick knitting needles. Choose the slickest knitting needles that you can find. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about the needle material and texture and finish. So I'll just give you a very quick run through my process of discovering this. So this is my jar of straight knitting needles with a few circulars thrown in for good measure. Um, and this really rep represents the kind of history of how I learned to knit. So like many people, I learned to knit using tools that I found at home um, that belonged to my grandma and my mum. It was their knitting packs from the 70s and 80s. And I learned to knit using these exact number eight, UK number eight, which is four millimeter aero steel knitting pins. I can feel them in my hand. They are freezing cold. They are pretty heavy and the surface texture is, is kind of dull. Um, so I knit with these and I also knit a few things on these. I believe that they are acrylic. Bright red plastic, you know, fabulous colour 1970s knitting pins. They are completely 
blunt. <laughs> they're completely blunt. Also, whilst they are plastic, they're not particularly light, um, given the size of them. So, um, quite early on in my knitting career, I developed quite a bad RSI repetitive strain injury in my wrist. It was pretty severe. Um, and it happened when I was only a teenager and it led to a lot of inflammation in my arms and tendonitis. It was quite horrific, you know, at one point I couldn't pick up a coffee cup and I couldn't open a door. It was really awful. Um, and I had to do a lot of treatment um, for that. And then I started looking into different types of knitting needles because I didn't want to stop knitting. And I found out that apparently bamboo needles were recommended because they are really light um, compared to the steel ones. They're really, really light and also they're very, very warm. So then I moved on to bamboo straights, but these have got some disadvantages. So the first disadvantage, I think you can kind of glimpse, uh, you kind of get, a, get an eye of that from just holding it up, is that they bend. They're not that strong um, because, you know, compared to metal and especially on the smaller sizes, which is, as I've already mentioned, that is what I tend to knit with. I tend to knit finer, finer garments um, using vintage patterns a lot of the time. And I've had bamboo needles bend in my hand and this set I can actually see is slightly cracked. There's a very small crack right in the middle. And this was especially a problem when I knitted socks. Um, the sock needles, 2.5 millimeters. Um, I've, I've sat on them <laughs> and I have snapped them just, just from knitting, just from the tension of knitting um, a lot. I, I will say that I've knit, you know, a lot using my tools. It's not like they snapped the first time, but I wasn't very happy with them snapping after like five items, five projects being knit on them or, or even 10, you know, I kind of, I have an expectation that my tools are gonna last me for a really long time, if not forever, probably gleaned from my um, grandma and my mum's vintage knitting tools, which kind of have lasted for 40 years, although I guess maybe not in as heavy use as I'm currently doing. So yeah, I tried bamboo. Um, I used bamboo for years. I also heard that using circular needles um, was better for you physically than straight needles because it allows the knitting piece to be distributed much more evenly um, as opposed to kind of always being weighted to one side. So yeah, then I went to bamboo circulars. So whether for knitting circular or straight. So all that changed when I discovered Knitting Podcasts about three or four years ago. And I felt like everybody kept talking about the brand of their knitting needle a lot, which was very new to me um, because my approach to that had previously been that you acquire a set of knitting needles over time and then you just use those, not that you would um, actually vary the individual tool of each needle according to each project. But actually it makes complete sense because your knitting is being created on the needle. And I found that, um, you know, like a whole new, world of this market of new products and tools had opened up to me and tentatively I dipped my toe in and I've never regretted it. So what do I mean by that is that I switched pretty much all of my projects to higher higher sharps. So this is a set of higher higher interchangeable needles. Um, I've got three needle tips living in here at the moment, three pairs, and then these are just some other wooden needles that are just hanging out in the same kit. And the kit comes with um, various other different things like cables that you use to attach um, to the needles for your knitting and you know different tools and whatnot. And for me, this was a bit of a splurge. Now, obviously, when you just buy one set of knitting needles, it's only about five pounds or so. And so it felt significantly different for me dropping 50 pounds or so on a set of interchangeable knitting needles. Um, but I can honestly say that it was one of the best decisions that I have made because I have knitted so much using this interchangeable needle set and it's, it's totally changed the game. Higher, higher sharps are, as it says on the tin, really sharp. So you can just get the needles into the stitches much more swiftly and just kind of get on with it. But the biggest difference is that they are really light and the coating is extremely, extremely slick. So this is really what I meant by choose slick knitting needles, as opposed to the bamboo needles, which are very textured, very um, matte, and they kind of grab onto the yarn a lot more. Now that is something which is advantageous when you are knitting with cotton, for example, or a yarn that is incredibly slippery. 
But on the whole, I'd say for the average pro project, um, the coatings of the high, high sharps have just been fantastic. Um, I will say that they are very, very sharp. Don't sit on them. <laughs> um, I have, you know, drawn blood by, uh, not using them properly and taking adequate safety precautions and um, even on this podcast actually it's happened live on camera so do be careful take care but for me it's been a totally worthwhile investment that has changed the game and using higher higher sharps needles is honestly what allows me to knit quicker um more than more than anything else so if you've been knitting on a project for a little while now and you feel like maybe it's dragging, you're not quite sure why, you've been putting loads of hours into it, maybe take a look down into a lap and check in on what the actual knitting needles are that you're using to do your project with. Um, and consider maybe is it time for an upgrade. Um, just one last quick tip, I will say that when you vary the material and texture of your knitting needles, it's quite likely to affect your gauge and your tension. And the reason for that is simply because um, the needles will feel differently to hold in your hands. Um, but also the kind of slipperiness and the slickness allows the yarn to travel across the needles in a different way. So for my higher, higher sharps, I typically find that I knit much tighter compared to my bamboo needles where I knit much, much looser. Um, similarly, the tension for, you know, purling and between knitting and the round and flat and all of that kind of thing is different. So do always knit a gauge swatch, uh, measure appropriately before and after blocking and just take note. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I really hope that my top five tips are going to be helpful for you. Is there something that I've left out? Do you do something differently that I haven't covered? I would really love to know. So drop me a comment down below and also let me know if you are doing any festive or gift knitting coming up and do you have any other advice for how to get those done in time? If you've enjoyed this video, please do give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below if if you haven't done so already. For those new to the channel, The Crimson Stitchery features a regular fortnightly video podcast where I talk about everything that I've been getting up to in knitting, mending, sewing and more. We also have a Ravelry group for The Crimson Stitchery featuring lots of very friendly and helpful chatter threads and that's also where we host um, knit alongs and I also send a monthly newsletter at the beginning of every month called Postcards from the Crimson Stitchery so if you'd like a monthly colourful and knitterly update in your inbox please do subscribe via the link down below. This video was a viewer suggested slash requested video and I do one such video every month so if there's something else that you'd like to see or if you have a question that you'd like me to answer feel free to get in touch leave me a comment um, and suggest it I will add it to my list and um, I hope that you've enjoyed watching. Take care, happy knitting, bye bye.